Welcome back to Velshi and Rule. President Trump fighting back against criticism of his racist tweets against four congresswomen of color. He insists that he, quote, doesn't have a racist bone in his body and telling anyone who isn't happy with the state of the country, you can leave. Yeah, and just moments ago in a cabinet meeting, he again justified his comments by referring to the, quote, horrible things said by Democratic women who he targeted, though not naming them. In an NBC think piece, Jonathan Greenblatt, Greenblatt of the Anti-Defamation League writes this. Let's be clear. Trump's language was absolutely and unquestionably racist, despite his denials to the contrary. To imply that four women of color are unqualified to represent their constituents because they supposedly come from somewhere else, despite all of them being U.S. citizens and all but one of them having been born in America, is literally racism defined. Jonathan Greenblatt, CEO and National Director of the Anti-Defamation League, joins us now. Jonathan. Tell us the danger of the sentiment. Go back to where you came from. Well, we've seen, Stephanie, this kind of nativism, this kind of xenophobia before. It's been used against people of color and immigrants and refugees over decades in this country. And it's deeply dangerous. We know that white supremacists will frequently say that people of color should go back to Africa or suggest that Jews somehow don't belong here. They love this kind of language. And it is alarming that our president is repeating this rhetoric now. Uh, Kellyanne Conway said to a reporter this morning in the driveway of the, uh, uh, of the White House, she said, a lot of us are sick and tired of, of this country, of America, coming last to people who swore oaths of office. There's a conflation here between people being critical of, uh, of America or its government or whatever the case is uh, and being unpatriotic. I, I, it's, a, it's a concern that has been leveled against different groups over history, which is kind yes. of dangerous because it works against the one thing that we all seem to share and believe in, and that is the First Amendment. It's, it works against the First Amendment. It works against the Constitution. It works against the ideas of our founding fathers who strove to create a more perfect union. And so public servants of all stripes, no matter where, you know, where they're from or how they look or how they pray or any of it, those people who seek to make our country better, those people who seek to criticize it constructively, if you ask me, that is patriotism defined. Mm -hmm. And to question them, to suggest they don't belong here, again, because of the, where they're from or how they look, that is racism defined. What does it tell you about the culture or the state of our country if the response to the president's uh, tweets and his actions is somewhat muted? It's, it's unnerving that across the political spectrum, people aren't all together coming out and pushing back on this. Now, I will say, I have heard some Republican elected officials and conservative columnists criticizing this, uh -huh. just as I've heard Democratic elected officials and more progressive columnists. But this is a moment when we need to recognize that the country is polarized. And we need our president and all people in public office to try to bring us together, not to divide us even further. It is cynical, it is sickening, and it's just plain wrong. The president uh, keeps dropping. He did this again in his cabinet meeting. He adds the, they hate the US, they hate Israel. Uh, what's, yeah. what's he doing there? Look, I think it is, again, deeply cynical to try to use Israel to drag it into this conversation. Because I'll be very honest, Ali, I haven't agreed with the, uh, with the Congress people on all of the issues. I've called them out, in fact, and disagreed, but to suggest that somehow they should go back to their countries who don't belong here and to cynically try to use Jews as a shield for that. Look, I, as the head of the ADL, and I think speaking for many people in the American Jewish community, President Trump doesn't speak for me when he says those things, and I want nothing to do with it. There are no signs that the president is going to back off from doing this. That being the case, you being the head of the Anti-Defamation League, what do you do? Well, look, whether you're the president of the United States or you're the president of your local school board, it's incumbent upon people in positions of authority to speak out when you hear this kind of thing. And so that's what I'm going to do as the CEO of the ADL. My conscience and my commitment to this country compels me to speak out. And I think, again, you're going to see many people from all walks of life, from NGOs, from government, from business, et cetera, step forward and say, enough. 
This can't go on. I've had some interesting conversations over the last 24 hours on Twitter with people who wonder That's why. That's impossible. Yeah, it, it, there, there's yeah. some good ones about why this feels a little bit different. And, you know, people saying, well, you're just naive. It sounds the same as everything else he's ever said. But what I thought was different about this, Jonathan, is that in the past, when somebody has said that the things that the president has said play into the hands of white nationalists, he's pushed back on that. He's denied that that's actually the case, even though he said things like find people on both sides. This time he didn't push back. When asked specifically by a reporter about the fact, the fact that white nationalists are celebrating his language, he said, it doesn't concern me because many people agree with me. Well, I guess he's right in that respect because some of the people who agree with him are white nationalists. People whose names I will not dignify by repeating on your program today are saying things like, this is the kind of white nationalism we elected him for. Or praising the things he's saying because essentially it's a repetition of their talking points. Remember, I was on your show just a few months ago, mm -hmm. you know, from San Diego. Yep. Oh. After the shooter went into that synagogue. Yep. Six months to the day that the shooter went into Pittsburgh. And these people believed in that case that Jews were behind some conspiracy to bring caravans mm -hmm. of people of color to the country. It is the kind of insane conspiracy theories that really should frighten all of us because yep. they can prompt violence. It gets people killed. And that's why this feels so wrong. Okay, Jonathan, they do. Uh, you are a consistent voice in, uh, in speaking for fairness and equity and, and uh, the dignity of all people. We thank you for that. Jonathan Greenblatt is the thank CEO you. and the National Director of the Anti-Defamation League.